Welcome, everyone. Uh, busy day here, uh, exciting day for the Blackhawks. And I'm going to start off by talking a little bit about the, the trade that we made. Um, thrilled to be able to add someone like Seth Jones to our team. Uh, he's a, an impact defenseman that we've been searching for for quite, quite some time. And uh, to finally be able to add him to our group here is uh, a huge move for the whole group. I think it, it changes the complexion of our defense in particular, but our team in general. Um, you know, we've had a chance to, to watch Seth uh, emerge in the league as a, a top defenseman, and uh, he's one of the few players that can do everything. Uh, you know, he, he certainly plays close to half the game. Um, you know, we love his competitiveness as well as his uh, all around game. Uh, he's got the size and the skating as well as the ability to play um, those tough minutes against top players and uh, every situation from the power play to the penalty kill. He's the guy you want on the ice with a minute to go and you're, when you're protecting a lead as well as when you're down a goal. So um, those are, are tough to find. So, uh, you know, when you get that opportunity to add someone like that, you, you have to do everything you can to bring them in. And uh, we certainly had to, to pay a price. And, um, you know, we wish Adam Boquist well, uh, great young player. I think he's got a really bright future in the league and, you know, he's just getting started, but, uh, you know, I really appreciate everything he did for us and he brought to the table as well. Um, you know, looking at, at this, we were, uh, going back and forth with Columbus for quite a while and, uh, you know, it wasn't easy to get ourselves to the point where we finally were closing the deal, but, uh, you know, we're, we're really excited about uh, a player like Lucas Reichel, who, uh, in, in addition to to Debrinket and Kirby Doc, those were players we just didn't want to include in this deal. So, you know, we had to find another way and uh, we were able to do it. So, um, you know, looking back at the way it played out, we're, we're in a really great spot today, having added a cornerstone defenseman who's, uh, you know, still entering the prime of his career. So, uh, that was a, a huge part of our day today. And, uh, finally we were able to make our selection just now adding defenseman Nolan Allen. Uh, you know, he had a really, really good tournament this year, um, at the under 18s down in Dallas. And obviously it was a bit of a different season with not too many games being played in, in the Canadian junior leagues, but uh, on the biggest stage down there, the, the Canadian team was uh, the top team and they ended up with the, the gold medal. And I thought Nolan was fantastic in that tournament. I got a chance to, to go down and watch him in person. And um, he's that, that guy that uh, brings the physical side to the game. He's a competitive player. You notice when Nolan Allen's on the ice, um, he's got the size and the skating and the physicality. Um, he was a really big workhorse for that Canadian team that won the gold medal. So um, he certainly caught my eye watching that game. And um, we think those are the types of players that uh, you need uh, to have success in today's game. So uh, with that, I will uh, turn it over to questions. Thank you very much, Stan. Again, media, if you have questions for Stan Bowman, please utilize the raise hand function on your screen. We already have a few queued up. So we'll begin with Mark Lazarus from The Athletic. Mark, your line is active. Please go ahead. Hi, Stan. Uh, does this change the timeline for you? I mean, last year was all about getting young guys in the league. This feels much more like a win now move. Uh, well, I guess it, I mentioned this the other day when I spoke, which is you're always looking for opportunities to try to accelerate your team's uh, progression. So, um, you know, we certainly had to include some uh, a young player in Adam Boquist and a draft pick as well couple draft picks, but um, there are so few opportunities to add a player of this caliber that um, you have to take advantage of it when they come around. But this is something that we've actually been, uh, maybe not this in particular move, but we, we've been planning to try to put our team in a position, both with assets and with cap space, to be able to, to make a move like this. Because... Um, if you look back at the last, you know, three or four years, these types of players are rarely available. Um, oftentimes when they're approaching free agency, they re with their current team. Uh, and you don't get a chance to uh, add a player like this. So 
um, we've been looking to add a difference maker for quite, quite some time. And it just all came together right now. I wouldn't say it changes anything that we're trying to do. Um, we're still, uh, we've got a lot of young players. Um, just look back at our team last year. Certainly Adam Boquist was one of those, but there were several others. Um, we've got some more young players coming in um, next year that uh, are going to continue to to help our group grow. So uh, I think if anything, what this does is it, it solidifies um, uh, a big anchor on our defense that we can count on to play close to half the games. And it, it really makes it easier on some of those other younger players to not have to carry such a load. So um, it doesn't change where we're headed in, by any means. I think it really complements it and hopes hopefully to accelerate our team's progress. It, it wasn't too long ago that, you know, Jones was in the Norris conversation, but he had a tough year this year. What, what do you chalk up his difficulties this past year to? Uh, well, they're, you know, their team didn't have the best year, but, um, you know, Seth is a, is a very, very impressive player. Um, he's got all the attributes that you look for in the modern defenseman um, with his skating, his size, his defensive ability. So like, he's one of these players that isn't really locked in as just an offensive guy. He can defend. He can also transport the puck. He can carry the puck and make plays. Um, he's got the size to be able to match up against really strong forwards, but he's got the skating to be able to defend the quick players as well. Long reach, um, fantastic athlete, um, really, uh, someone that can do everything. So, um, you know, you can look at their performance and, you know, their, their team wasn't at their best last year. And you know, as to why that is, you know, you could probably break it down a number of different ways, but, you look at the body of work for someone like Seth and uh, it gets us really excited. Our next question will come from Phil Thompson with the Chicago Tribune. Good evening, Stan. Hi, Phil. Hi. So I want to know from a, a salary cap perspective uh, when you were negotiating the extension uh, with him, uh, was this the kind of the price of admission, you know, the the um, the cap hit and the years? Uh, is there any concern about the long term, you know, kind of weight of how much capital you have wrapped up in one player? Uh, no, there's no. I think, uh, you know, like I said a little bit ago, we, we've been planning this out um, for a couple of years now. If you look at our team relative to every other team in the league, um, we're positioned better than anybody. Um, we've only got um, a couple players signed beyond the next two years. And then at that point, we, we, nobody's under contract. So we really have uh, almost a blank slate coming up. Um, so, uh, you know, that's an unusual situation to be in. We, we've, we've worked hard to get ourselves there and it wasn't easy. You can't do it overnight. Um, but um, we have the ability um, you know, two years out to, to really go in whatever direction we want at that time. Uh, and I think that flexibility is going to be huge for us. So we don't have all the information on what our team's going to look like in two years. Uh, but we know having someone like Seth Jones at, at that point, he'll be 28 years old. Um, you know, he's, he's going to be a huge part of where we're going. So, you know, I look back at uh, our teams in the past when we had success and, um, you know, Duncan Keith was 26 back in um, the 9-10 season. Um, and that was the beginning of really that, that great run of years when our team was, was at its best. So uh, I think Seth is just entering his prime years. He hasn't even really uh, hit, hit his top stride quite yet. So when you add all that up, uh, I think we're positioned very well um, for the cap in the coming years. Sam, uh, maybe this is just my perspective, but it seems like you have a running theme of taking guys that maybe have had a little bit of a down year, and but seem to have the talent on paper. You know, if you look at your recent acquisitions, and I would certainly put Seth in this category, is that something that is a conscious decision or do you see it another way? Uh, I guess I, I see it a little bit differently in Seth's case. I mean, he is uh, 
he is a, an elite defenseman in the league and he's got all the attributes that, um, that you need. If, if you look around the, the players that are impacting the, the best teams in the league, they're all the, these big defensemen that have that combination of offense and defense. They can play the game with speed. They can play the game with physicality. They can transport the puck. They can defend. Uh, so uh, I think the, there's a very few guys in the league that have that combination of skills. Um, you know, we, we look around at all the, the teams that are succeeding. You look at the makeup of their defense and you see how they're doing it. And that's what you need in today's game to be a successful team. We'll next go to Scott Powers with The Athletic. Hey, Stan. With, uh, I, I guess, the, devoting so much, so many years to Seth, was there something about it, specifically about the way he plays where you project him um, to play the same way, I guess, into his 30s? And I, I guess is, if you can kind of talk about the process of kind of projecting him, not just, I guess, now, but, you know, seven, eight years down the road. I mean, Seth's young. I mean, he's, like I said, he's 26 years old. I think that's that's very young for a defenseman. And, you know, I, I think in today's game, when, when these players, they rarely ever come available. And when they do um, without, without exception, they all, um, they all sign these long-term deals because that that's when you're getting their best hockey is from really from age 26 on is when those defensemen are at their peak. So um I guess I look at it as a benefit as opposed to, um, you know, being a negative. How important was it to be able to talk to him and his agent uh, in the process before making the trade and ensure that you'd have him long-term? Yeah, that, well, that was something that I had worked out with Yarmo and, you know, we were going back and forth. And at some point when it looked like we were going to probably be able to close a deal, um, that's when I said you know, before we could make a trade, I would have to, be able to talk to his agent and um, have confidence that we were going to be able to extend him. Cause if you're going to, if you're going to pay uh, a price of assets to, to bring someone in, you want them to be there for more than one season. So that was a critical part of the transaction. And um, you know, I was, I was glad that, that Yarma was allowing us to do that. Well, let's go to Charlie Romeliotis with NBC Sports Chicago. Hey, Stan, can you walk us through what those negotiations were like between you and Columbus? Because it feel like you guys were were working on this for a while and maybe weren't seeing eye to eye. I know Kirby and Alex, you mentioned Reichel, their name were floated out there. But how important was it to kind of stay away from that? And was there ever any doubt that that this would get done? Uh, well, sure. It wasn't it wasn't obvious that this was going to come uh, to completion. And yeah, uh, we you know, I first approached Yarmo, I guess, when the, when the story broke that Seth had decided he wasn't going to um, sign a contract extension. That was a couple months ago, I believe. Um, and I indicated at that time that if Yarmo ever gets to the point where he would be trading him, um, we would be uh, very interested in trying to close a deal. So it wasn't a daily conversation we had. It, it picked up a lot more over the last probably – I don't know, five or six days. Uh, and there was a lot of conversations. So probably wasn't until really this morning when it seemed like things were trending, um, like we could put something together. But I think for where we are right now, it was it was very important for us to preserve the, the players you mentioned, the forwards. Like we have a lot of young defensemen that we've built up. So I think um, we were in a position that we were dealing from a position of strength there. We could afford to trade a great young promising player in Adam Boquist, but we have a lot of other ones uh, coming as well. Some of which played already last year and some more that are on their way. So I think that that was the key thing for us was to make sure that we, we preserve those young forwards who are uh, in the case of, of Kirby and Alex, um, they're already here. And, you know, Lucas is on his way here and, you know, we expect him to be in North America next year. Thanks. Next question to Ben Pope with the Chicago Sun-Times. Hey, Stan. Um, certainly giving up Boquist is, is a big part of it, but also um, moving back in the draft tonight and the second rounder and the first rounder next year. Um, does, is that kind of an indication you feel like 
the prospects that um, will eventually sort of form the next generation of this team are, are already in the system to be willing to give up um, two first rounders basically like that? Uh, I don't know if I look at it that way, Ben. It's not that, you know, we have enough prospects. So you, you always need them. I mean, we, you need to add them every year. It's, it's an ongoing process. Um, but at, at some point, like I said, we, we've been planning something like this for the last couple of years. You're trying to put yourself in a position that when a player of Seth's ability and caliber comes uh, available, that you're in a position to, number one, have the assets that it would take, and number two, have the cap room to be able to do it. And not too often do those things always line up. So um, th there's a lot of there's a lot of luck in, in how the timing. So we've been working on this, hoping something, a player of this caliber would come available. And, um, you know, it, it lined up really well for us, but, you know, there were times in two, three years ago when players came available and it just, it wasn't a match for where we were as a team or where we were with our cap or where we were with our asset value. So um, I think we're always looking to add uh, and that's why, you know, we're, we're excited to be able to get into the first round here, even though we had to trade the earlier pick, we still had a first round pick. We've got, you know, multiple picks tomorrow. Um, and that's something that we're going to continue to focus on you know, as we, as we leave here tonight, you know, do our homework and be prepared for tomorrow. Tomorrow's a big day for the draft. Well, what planning have you done over the past two years, as you said, to, to kind of prepare for this? Well, it's a combination of moves. I mean, almost every move we made was attempting to either gain assets or gain cap space and to put ourselves in the position to where um, we we were able to do this. So we're, I mean, I've, I've corresponded with several other general managers just in the last several hours who said, boy, we, we would love to have been in a position to to be in on that. But it just didn't li line up with where we were. And I think that that's the reality of today's game. Um, you know, the salary cap flexibility is something it takes a while to get ourselves to this point. Like, like I mentioned a little bit ago, we're the only team that has that flexibility going out um, where we can really go in so many different directions uh, two years from now. So I think having that flexibility was, was pivotal in this uh, as well as the, the assets that we've accumulated. Um, it put us in this position where, um, we could we could take a shot like this and, and bring in an impact player. Our next question will come from Pat Boyle with NBC Sports Chicago. Pat, your line is active. Please go ahead. Hey, Stan. Uh, of all the deals that you've made the, the past decade plus, is this one one of the most complex or, or most challenging considering what Columbus was asking for, which you were willing to give up, the extension you needed to get done to – to make it worth giving up those assets? And then how big a role did Caleb's acquisition play in this? Um, it was a very complex deal. So I, your first question, I would say uh, it was certainly up there. There were a lot of elements to the negotiations, trying to get it to a, a level where we were comfortable and also where Columbus was comfortable and then you turn your attention to the contract and you have to work through that with, with his agent, Pat Brisson. And uh, so there were a lot of elements at play there and uh, it's, it's been a long day. That's for sure. Uh, as far as Caleb's role, I, I, uh, I think it, it's a great story. I think sometimes there's too much made out of that, that um, I, I don't, uh, I don't really know. I mean, certainly Caleb had nothing to do with the trade. Maybe he had something to do with uh telling Seth he should sign with the Blackhawks. I don't really know that part of it, but, you know, we like Caleb. We think he, he's just kind of coming into his own as well. And, um, you know, we've got some young defensemen and, and he's going to supplement that group. So uh, it's certainly a great story to have the two of them here. Um, I'm sure, you know, I haven't talked to them about it, but I would imagine it's, it's probably a pretty uh, neat reality for them to be on the same team. Thanks, Dan. Time for a couple of more questions. The next one will come from John Dietz with the Daily Herald. Yes, Dan, one thing we haven't talked about is just a little bit of the intangibles with Seth. 
just his leadership ability, um, competitive nature, things like that. Obviously, you sign a guy because he's talented, but you know anything about those things about him? And is that also one of the reasons you signed him? Yes. Uh, I, mean, I, I know quite a bit about Seth's character. I mean, I've had a chance, you know, working through USA Hockey to, to you know, see his progression and some of these uh, tournaments that he's participated in. You get kind of an up-close and personal view of, of what kind of a – leader he can be and um, just, just a fantastic person. And uh, you, you can't say enough about those, the importance of, of that as well. Obviously the most important thing is what can he do on the ice? But um, when you set that aside and you, you look at all those intangibles and the leadership, um, I think it, it it's a huge part of what you're trying to do to help, um, you know, and bring your group together. And also we have a young group of defensemen here. And although he's a, a young guy as well, he's got a lot of experience for someone who's only 26. He's, he's had a long career already. So I think he can play a role in helping to, to mentor some of those younger defensemen. Thanks. Final question. We'll go to Joe Brand of WGN Hi, Stan. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, going back, I, I know you said this was definitely a complex acquisition, but did you find yourself maybe being a little bit more aggressive at this with the back and forth? And like you said, how complex it was. I mean, did you maybe find yourself uh, finding a, a more of a surge to get this thing done? Uh, I, I would say there's, there's an element to that. Uh, and like I touched on before, I guess the biggest part of it is just that the opportunity you have to acquire a player of that caliber is um, it's so rare so that when you, when it's right in front of you and you can, you can imagine that you might be able to actually get this trade done. Um, you really do dig in and, and you do your best uh, to make it happen because, you know, you're thinking for a minute, well, sure. It's easy to say, we don't want to, we don't want to give a young player like that, or we don't want to give a first round pick. And then you play out, the other scenario, which is, okay, let's decide to not do that. And then you're looking around and, and player goes somewhere else. And then it's not like you just move on to the next uh, number one defenseman and you take a shot at getting him. Um, there's so few of them that ever actually reach the market. And as a result, when that happens, um, I think you really got to do everything you can to make it happen. Stan, thank you very much for your time this evening. We really appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, what was your reaction uh, when you heard your name called there last pick of the round? Just uh, just shocked. I mean, uh, I didn't really know where I was going to go. So, uh, yeah, to hear my name called in the last pick there, it was, uh, it was pretty exciting. The whole house erupted. So. Oh, just what do you feel like you can bring? How would you describe your game? Uh, I'd say I'm a solid two-way defender. I think, uh, you know, skating is a big part of my game, and uh, I like to play physical and, you know, play hard against the other team's top forward and, and shut them down. So I just try to find a way to help the team I can in uh, any way. Our next question will come from Charlie Rumeliotis with NBC Sports Chicago. Charlie, your line's active. Hey, Nolan, uh, congratulations. Um, how, how much are you looking forward to, to – joining this franchise, obviously a rich history, but some, some, some really good defensemen and, and are there any defensemen that you try modeling your game after who, who do you watch? Um, I mean, far, as far as right now, I mean, uh, a guy from Davidson, uh, Braden McNabb, he plays in, in Vegas. Um, he's, he's kind of a guy I kind of look up to and try to play like kind of watch him growing up and, uh, yeah, no, I'm really excited to, you know, join Chicago with, you know, all the history there and, you know, it being a, an original six team. I know the, the fan base there is unreal. And, uh, you know, there have obviously been some pretty good defensemen through there with, you know, Keith and Seabrook and now uh, Jones just getting dealt there too. So. What was the communication level like between you and the Blackhawks? Uh, did you get an impression that they were, that they had some, some real interest in you? Yeah, I had talked to the Blackhawks for a team that I talked to probably one of the more times, um, one of the most, I guess, out of the other teams. Um, so I kind of had a feeling there. I mean, I didn't really know know when. I mean, 
I was kind of thinking maybe second round somewhere in there, but uh, yeah, I was really excited to hear my name called tonight. We'll next go to Phil Thompson with the Chicago Tribune. And right, what has this, uh, this process been like for you, uh, given the restrictions with the pandemic, the limitations, uh, you know, the kind of herky-jerky nature of when you're able to play? Yeah, I mean, it, it was obviously a different year for everyone this year. And then, uh, you know, going into the bubble and, you know, doing, I guess, Zoom calls and Zoom interviews with, with teams and, you know, trying to work around your schedule and their schedule. It was, I guess, a little bit more tough. I mean, but, uh, you know, it was great that we got to end up having a season and, uh, you know, it was pretty special that I was able to, you know, be a part of that winning Canada team at the under 18s. So, uh, yeah, after that, uh, I'd say it was a pretty, pretty good year for what it was worth. What's been your family or friends reactions uh, you hear from any, anybody special? Uh, yeah, just well here with my family, they, they, uh, they got pretty excited and got pretty loud and, uh, you know, so, uh, yeah, it was just, just us here. So we didn't really know if I was, uh, if I was going to go. So, uh, yeah, it was pretty special. Our next question will come from Scott powers with the athletic Scott, your lines active. Hey, Nolan, congratulations. What, uh, what do you feel like you, you need to work on your game? Where do you kind of focus on this next season? I think, uh, you know, more so my offensive game. I think that's something that, you know, I'm trying to add to my game as, you know, I've got that foundation of, you know, being a physical stay at home defender and playing on the, the penalty kill and, you know, keeping pucks out of the net. So I think, you know, the next step would be to add another element to my game and work on, you know, the offensive side, whether it be uh, puck skills or shot or, you know, just jumping into the play in those situations. Do you, do you plan on staying in Prince Albert? And is that, I, I guess, if you can talk about wh why you find that so favorable to your development? Yeah, I, I plan to stay in Prince Albert. Uh, we got great coaches there. Um, they have pumped a, a lot of D, great D men through, through that system. And, you know, Jeff Truett, our defensive coach, and, you know, Mark Habscheid, they, they've, uh, you know, developed a, a great number of NHLers. So I think, you know, going back there and continuing to develop under them is the right play. Our next question will come from Mark Lazarus with The Athletic. Hi, Nolan. Congrats. Um, you, like, you kind of touched on this. You, you don't put up a lot of points or you haven't put up a lot of points. It can be tough to kind of get noticed when you don't. What do you think it is about your game that caught, you know, the Blackhawks eye and, and made you a first round pick? Um, I think just, uh, you know, playing to my strengths and, you know, finding a way to help the team. If I can't do it on the score sheet, I got to, you know, find another way to do it. And, you know, there's, there's plenty of room for big uh, physical, you know, good skating defenders in the NHL. So, you know, I try to play, play to my strengths and, you know, do that to, to help the team. What do you envision as your timetable here? How long do you want to be in juniors? And when do you want to take that next step? Um, you know, that's, that's a very tough question. Um, you know, I don't have a set timeline or anything. It's, you know, just going to keep working my hardest and, you know, as, as soon as, as soon as I can get there is, is all I'm hoping for. Our final question will come from Joe Brand with WGN Radio. Hi, Nolan. Congrats. Uh, somebody on the TV draft coverage brought up the comparison of Brent Seabrook, which obviously will get a lot of Chicago fans happy. What do you know about Brent Seabrook? What's your response to that? Yeah, Brent, Brent Se Seabrook, he's, uh, you know, he's a legend there in Chicago. He played there, played there forever. And, you know, what he was able to do there and, you know, what they were able to do as a team, you know, winning those cups. And he was a huge part of that. Um, you know, that's, that's a pretty, uh, pretty big comparable. I mean, he's a, he's a pretty good player. So if I could do even what, even half of what he did, I'd, uh, you know, I'd be uh, happy with that, but uh, yeah. Thanks. In with questions, we we'll go to Mark Lazarus with the Athletic. Hey, Mark, were uh, you the only bummed guy in the room when the Seth Jones trade went down because you dropped back twenty spots? Uh, no, I was uh, very, very excited. It, uh, you know, we we were prepared uh, going in. We knew there were conversations. 
Uh, we didn't know really this morning how far along they were, but uh, it was a little challenging, but we adapted. What's that like? I mean, you spent months preparing for someone that was going to be in that 11, 12, 13, 14 range. And then the day of the draft, that's all out the window. I mean, how much scrambling do you have to do? Well, not as much as you think because, uh, you know, we worked the first round so hard. And then we had two picks in the second round. So really, once you get to player number 20, uh, you're working 20 to 50 to cover the, what's going to be available in the second round. We'll next go to Phil Thompson with the Chicago Tribune. Mark, I want to know uh, what what you've seen out of uh, Nolan Allen, um, you know, in, in terms of not just his skills, but some intangibles. Maybe there's some some that stood out to you where you saw something. Uh, I think what really stands out about him is probably um, uh, his compatibility, uh, really good teammate. Uh, he has a great presence on the ice. Uh, but it's the subtlety of his game. Uh, he's physical, um, really good uh, block shots, kills penalties, um, plays a lot of the hard minutes. We'll next go to Pat Boyle with NBC Sports Chicago. Mark, uh, what did you think of, of the number of trades that we saw tonight in the first round? And, and did it... Did it unfold at least the first half of the first round kind of as you anticipated or thought it might? Yeah, actually, the um, I think we were right on probably till right about the 12th, uh, 13th pick. And at that point, it started, we expected it, it, it started to go in different directions, names coming off the board, but it, uh, not drastically. So... Uh, I, I think the draft went, uh, I think we're confident that it went the way we thought it was going to go uh, early. And then later, um, we needed a little bit of help. You know? Was the player you wanted at 12 originally, uh, were, was that player available when Colorado picked? Um, or, or at Columbus, I should say. Um, yeah, they were looking at the exact same pool of players that we were talking about. So there was no surprise there. Well, let's go to Charlie Romeliotis with NBC Sports Chicago. Hey, Mark, uh, uh, I, are you a, a best take the best available player kind of guy? Or, or when you get to those picks, are you looking at the organizational depth chart and, and feel like Nolan would kind of slot really nicely here or there? Like, where's your philosophy on that? No, it, it really in the first round and even into the second round, I think we're trying to get the best available, um, the player that probably can impact us the most. Uh, as the draft goes on, I think then we you know, kind of take in and look at what the, the organizational depth chart is and maybe what our needs are. Is it weird that, you know, just, I, I guess for, for me, seeing on social media and some of the other, other analysts that feel like he – I think Nolan even said that he was projected to go in the second round. Is it weird just to see how, how different teams value different players, especially in this year's draft specifically? Yeah, we, well, we, we actually, we knew that's why uh, we looked at the first uh, half of the first round and we thought that, you know, a lot of the same names were going to be on the board and that's the way it played out. Um, the, the second half of the first round, we felt we were going to need some help to get the players uh, that we were looking at. And uh, we did get some help because Nolan was there. Uh, you know, it, when you start looking at the second round, or excuse me, the second half of the first round, the second round, um, the separation between the players um, is very, very slight. So I think it really comes down to, uh, you know, how we project them. We'll next go to Ben Pope with the Chicago Sun-Times. Hey, Mark, uh, what did Nolan do um, in the U18s in particular that, that maybe um, moved him up your board or, or convinced you he was the guy? Well, I, I think it was, um, you know, every game, every shift, um, a lot of predictability in this game. Um, in he, he's not a flashy player, but yet he's very mobile, 
uh, very safe first pass. Um, he can handle a puck, um, but his decision making when he has the puck is very, very good, very, very efficient. And then heading to tomorrow, you're not picking until 62nd now, but but what are your thoughts on on what's left and what you might get there? And then the other well, picks? Well, my thoughts are I'm going to go put my head down on the pillow and hope my phone rings and Stan, Stan tells me we have another second-round pick. So um, we're, we're looking forward to tomorrow. We think that there's uh, still quite a few names on there that uh, excite us. Mark, thank you very much for your time this evening. We'll talk to you soon. Blackhawks Media, appreciate your patience as well tonight.